Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again with another Market Watch Investments video for you guys tonight. Getting things kick started, we're going to begin with Cards of Consonants. So, some pretty cool prints. There is a Secret Rare from Legendary Collection Kaiba, Ultra Rare from Legendary Collections 5Ds, and a Super Rare OG Original print from Absolute Power Force. I would personally prefer the Secret Rares from Legendary Collection Kaiba. This was a really great set that saw a lot of amazing Secret Rares, mostly for the Secret Rares, but I really appreciate from this reprinted collector set. Let's go ahead and look at some first editions. First, first edition, here's me on the first page. It's going to be about three bones, so single stack. And the majority of these are single stacks, and they go for about three-ish, two to three bones, five pages on the market. This is a great draw power card. Obviously, it's got great synergy with dragon builds. And it's got really cool artwork. I love cardboard on cardboard artwork. And this is just a great draw power card. I'm a huge fan of draw power cards. I think turboing through your deck and having multiple resources for getting through your deck and just having great synergy and draw power with all the cards makes it just a... And with what makes a good build. Draw power is a really big deal for me personally. That's just one of my personal player preferences. The second best, I would say, would be the OG prints, first edition exclusively um, super rare prints. And this is going to be about two bones for the first first edition here. There's one. And there's another one here for, again, roughly around about a little over two if you factor in shipping. So not really a lot of fat stacks either with this one. And four pages on the market for that. So cards, consonants, pretty cool. Next is going to be Destiny Hero Plasma. This card is really, really good. I personally have never built any kind of hero stuff, e heroes, um, Destiny heroes, any of that. But heroes have like a ridiculous amount of support. Konami just loves giving new support to the hero archetype slash deck builds in general. Um, top priority here is going to be the 2007 Collector's Tin Secret Rare Promos. Definitely the best version print that we have of this card. If you're not familiar with this card, this is an older card. Again, 2007, we're going about 13 years old. So you can pause the video, read this effect. Really great effect. This card is really blowout. has really cool artwork too. Reminds me of like some kind of like monster from Biohazard or something. I'm a really big Biohazard fan. Or Resident Evil was the title here in the United States. Really fun game. Um, and this card is, you know, worth relatively good value. It's actually decreased quite a bit. I remember this card being like 15, 13, 12 bone range. It's about almost around 8 now for some single stacks here. Only 4 pages on the market. Really great card. This is really the only version that I think is worth investing in. There really isn't any other versions that... I see of much interest. There's a Super Rare from Legendary Collections 2, Super Rare from Destiny's Hero, and I got some crap commons here, but I think the Secret Rare is pretty great. Next is going to be System Down. This card is literally, like, extremely impactful, and machines have had a relatively strong presence in the meta. I feel like every couple of years there is a relatively powerful machine-based archetype slash deck that comes out that kind of takes the the game state by storm there is an ultimate rare print from the original set cybernetic revolution this is an insanely old set and artwork is kind of like it, it it's not really anything too special in my personal opinion again this is an old school ultimate rare there is one here for 14 dollars, which i think is an incredible price point but be very careful because it is listed as lightly played which is fine but I've purchased quite a few times from Super Special Awesome Cards. A long time ago, before I even started using TCG Player, I used to get the majority of my cards off eBay. And I purchased a lot of cards from Super Special Awesome on eBay. And their lightly plays are more like... Um, like played, they're more like played. They some cards have like bends or splits or creases, so their lightly played are, are are pretty like heavily lightly played. So be very careful about that. Not all their cards, but the majority of their lightly played, I would say, are not even you know considered lightly played. Their grading system is a little a little janky. But um, after that, after that fourteen version is gone, um, 
you know, there's only three pages left. Let's go ahead and take a look to see if we can find another first edition. The next first edition goes all the way up to 35 plus. So pretty great value in that. And rightfully so. I mean, this card is just amazing. If you guys just read the effect here, obviously it's situational because you have to be playing against a machine eccentric deck. But there is a lot of cool machine decks out there. And this card could just essentially be uh, an utter game changer, a complete table turner. There's also a super from OTS Pack 2, which is about a couple dollars here. And then there's just some rares and commons, so really nothing of any significance. So just wanted to showcase this really quick. Next is going to be Tyranno Infinity. I really like the name of this card, and I think the artwork is really cool too. Interesting enough, there's still no super hollow uh, foils of this card. The highest rarity is a rare Donning Out of Dark Rep 4, which is like insane in price value right now. It's like between 23, 28. You guys can look into that. I'm not a big fan of Dark Revelations. That's just player preference for me personally. And all these other versions or are just commons. It looks like the original print came out of Cybernetic Revolution as well. And this card is really good. So uh, really quick, I'm just going to go ahead and, and click on it so you guys can read the effect if you're not familiar with this. It's basically like a Grand Maju, except it does a grand of life points per uh, dinosaur type. So really, really great, and it's also um, any 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 players. Well, I guess it is uh, your your your, mon your dinosaur monsters. But anyway, dinosaurs are really cool. I really like this deck a lot. I've never personally piloted or built this deck, but I think it's a relatively strong deck, and it, it's kind of like reminds me of. Mermel Atlantean, like they kind of, kind of pops up every once in a while, and people don't really expect it, and it kind of just uh, gets people off guard. So, really cool card. I really hope that we get. I think a secret rare would definitely be really cool. I'm a really big fan of secret rare foiling, and I think this would look really nice in secret rare. Unfortunately, there's really just not any uh, nice prints of this, but it's interesting that the rare. So, if you guys find this somewhere like super cheap, like it's it's worth money, I'll definitely. Um, so I don't know who's paying these price points for just this rare, but that is the current market value for that. Next is going to be Blue Eyes White Dragon. So there's so many layers to the collector's market for this card specifically. This is one of the most infamous, legendary cards, uh, iconic cards in all of the game, right up there with Dark Magician. And there's so many great prints. Uh, the Ghost Golds from Haunted Mine are seeing some great value. Same with the Anniversary Pack Ultras. This is my personal favorite rarity of Blue Eyes. And there's also uh, the Dual Terminal 1 Super Rares are holding some pretty great price points as well. This is one of my favorite versions of Blue Eyes. I really love DT stuff, especially Holofoil's DT are just so aesthetically pleasing. Really, really gorgeous. This card's going all the way up to about 28. These are mostly 1 sacks until we get to about the center of the page. We get a couple 3s for 30. And there's only two pages of this. Nonstop Gaming has an impressive 30 stack, which is very crazy for a card like this for 35. So this card is really, really great, and it's holding some great price value. There's a couple other versions that I wanted to showcase for you guys because Blue Eyes is just a gold mine. I think Blue Eyes builds in general are really fun, and they're not necessarily like overpoweringly competitive, but they are extremely fun to play. I've built Blue Eyes before. I really, really like Blue Eyes. It's a fun deck, and you just get to bring out all these beaters and just beat your opponent's face in it. It's really fun, and it's cool. It's cool just playing like a a, um, a card of, of this legendary caliber. It's, it's really fun to just have as a powerhouse in your, in your deck. And there's a lot of cool support cards for this now. So interesting enough... Um, the dark side of Dimensions movie pack saw, like, there were so many different versions. I got really confused about this because there's, like, the gold secret, there's, like, the standard secret, there was the gold, and then I think there was another print, too, which was, like, just the, the ultra. So there was, like, no, standard ultra, there was platinum gold, there was secret, there was secret gold. There was, like, four different versions. They just really tried to, Konami really milked the cow on this one. With the reprints on this um but it's interesting i'm really surprised that this secret gold are actually higher than the standard secrets i really normally player base prefers just standard secret versions over secret gold but i will admit 
that I invested on both versions personally. I One, I love the artwork. This is some of the best artwork in my personal opinion. I believe this specific artwork of Blue Eyes is one of the better artworks that we have. Also, it is from a movie pack promo, which, um, well, I guess they have like some special editions to that reprint. I'm kind of, this is kind of an obscure set that I'm not very, like, 100% confident in my history on, so I'm not going to speak too much about on that. But the artwork is just phenomenal, and this, this photo really does not give this card justice. I have several copies of these, and it's a lot brighter. It's more like that that gold hint. It's more like yellow than it is like this like dark brown looking color. The secret foiling is very, very predominant all throughout the card. It looks very, very great. And I really appreciate this version. And it's not that I appreciate this version more than the standard secret because I invested in the standard secret as well. But this is going for almost seven bones. And there's a, some pretty good stacks on here. Only two pages available on this. So I think that is interesting. You don't see this very often that a gold card holds more value over a standardized secret. But then again, this is a little bit more particular because it is gold secret. It's not just like a normal, crappy, nasty looking gold card. It is a gold secret, which the majority of gold secrets, there's some platinum gold secrets that look pretty awful, but some of them look relatively good, in my personal opinion. Whereas, you know, it's about seven bones for the gold secret, whereas from the same set, the standard secret versions are going to be about four-ish bones if you factor in shipping. And there's a little bit more, uh, I would say, of quantity of this one. So this is just amazing artwork, really great rarities. I think this card is highly undervalued, and it's been slowly trickling up in price value. And I just really wanted you guys to take note of that because I think there's some great investment value for that card, especially if you get on it early. It's already starting to kind of go up, so I mean, it may be a little bit late, but it's not too late to jump on this. Of course, the uh, Dual Saga ones, those have been, you know, getting more popular as Dual Saga gets older. And there's several different versions of this, but really more specifically, I just wanted to kind of highlight the price differenti differentiation between the Standard Secret and the Gold Secret. Next is going to be Gren Maju de Ez Eza. Aiza. This card's super great. I'm a huge anti-meta player, and the majority of my anti-meta builds, I run, uh, of course, Microcosmos and Banisher of the Radiance and Banisher of the Light. You, the majority of the times, I go focus on anti-special summoning and uh, removal, and this card is just amazing for that. This uh, this card would be amazing in an ultimate rare. OTS Pack 12, Dawn is super rare, which I wanted to take a look at. It's only about two bones, which is really great. I've always loved this card. This is another Gen 1 Yu-Gi-Oh card that is still just hold true power all throughout the ages. It's just a powerhouse card. And a lot of people even debate about this getting this card possibly projected onto the Forbidden Ban list just because it is it is a really good card. Like, I mean, you can just you can bust it out depending on what the game state is, and it can really just not essentially knock your opponent out in one turn, especially when we have cards now like Pot of, Devi Pot of Desires and like Necro Face and stuff that just really combo ignition this card a lot. So OTS Pack Dawn is super rare. This is still the only Super Hollow. I was really happy about this. I, I really wish we would get an ultimate rare print of this. This is an ultimate rare. I think would just look extremely amazing. But I'm really happy we got we finally got a super rare version. Again, these are about 10 bones and there's a relatively good quantity on the market. There's also the Generation Dual Monsters Era 1 original OG prints from Invasion of Chaos, which is one of my all-time favorite nostalgic Dual Monster Era set. We got Chaos Monsters from this set, and this set was just holds significance value and is so rich in history to me personally. And let's go ahead and see if we can find some first editions. There's five plus pages here. We get our first first editions on the second page. They're going to be roughly about two-ish bones if you factor in shipping. There's really just not a lot of um, fat stacks for these first editions, but there is several to kind of go through here if you want to go through the pages. An amazing card. Next is going to be Gold Sarcophagus. This card is really great. Again, this is just another kind of removal eccentric build a support card. Uh, I believe Thunder Dragons use this. I think Thunder Dragons is one of the, the later uh, big popular decks that 
um, saw kind of brought this card into uh, being more popular for like day-to-day -day play. Some really amazing prints. We have the Gold Series 2009, 2008, 2009 Gold Series that go right. They actually look really, really nice. I really like those those gold versions, and they're also getting up there in age. They're holding some pretty great value for some cards. This uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this and the Secret Rare from Hidden Summoners would definitely be my top versions for this card. I think it's cool how it's gold sarcophagus and it's from gold, gold series 2009. It looks really great. Like 2008, 2009 again, they, they just really just, just put like a little hint of gold, just like a shine reflection on this and it came out really great. And these are going to be about six and then they slowly kind of trickle up after that. Only two pages left of that, so it's holding pretty good value. Now personally, I would go for the secret rares. I do like the 2008 series. Uh, or 2009 series gold versions, they look very great, but the Hidden Summoners donned a secret rare print, which looks gorgeous too. I have both versions. I have more copies of the first edition secrets than I do the gold series 2009s, but both versions look very, very great. I wouldn't say one is better than the other. I will say that the secret rare is obviously significantly cheaper, and there's a significant amount more available on the the market here so i would recommend that you guys go for the secrets as far as any other versions the super rares are i mean if you want to just have super rares just to like have a hollow foil to play to beat up and just not really care about duelist revolution special editions donned a super rare and then of course you got you know the champion cards prize cards or ferals promos which are just you know out of stock there you know unattainable now but secret rare and the 2009 series would definitely be the best versions in my personal opinion i don't know why my tabs are not loading are they already preloaded anyway necroface is going to be best next uh another infamous removal card this card just has really killer artwork it's got that like spooky creepy doll artwork and there's a super rare from crimson crisis from special editions which is holding about six bones now which is had a little bit of a price increase. There's this crap common here. And of course, you have the infamous Gladiator's Assault original secret rare print. I'm really surprised that this card is super old and it still only has three prints. I definitely think it deserves some more reprints. This card is, I wouldn't say like a super popular card, but people know what this card is. They know what it does. And it, it's got some, honestly, I don't really know its history. I just, I, it was on the list for the longest time at 1, and I think now it's at 2, if I'm not mistaken. Either 2 or 3. It got lifted off the list a little bit. But it, for the longest time, it's just been increasing, 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 and it's just holding some like ungodly price points. You have some foreign, foreign versions here, which start out at 200 bones, and then you have just the, all these cards are foreign for the first couple ones. And then the first English version that we get, first edition is almost $500. It's 448 bones for this card. So really, really crazy price points on this card. This card has like always been really expensive, but now it's getting like dumb expensive. And I guess because it's an old school secret rare, and there's just really not that many versions of this. Next is going to be one of the all-time best floodgates. Light and dark Eccentric decks are like all over the place. Some of the most infamous decks in all of the history of this game have been light based or dark based, or kind of a blend of both. They're always constantly getting some crazy support to light and dark dot slash decks. And Lightning Imprisoning Mirror and Shadow Imprisoning Mirror are just really great floodgates. I feel like people just kind of either they're older cards, so I don't know if like the newer players just have don't know that they're around or a lot of people kind of forgotten about them but these are always amazing to ha have around and both versions have dt prints and they're still relatively cheap which is incredible i don't know how this card is holding such a cheap price point wouldn't really care about any of these versions the dt sevens would be my personal ideal choice i think the most aesthetically pleasing they look really great and these cards are just a great side cards to have not necessarily to just you know have three slots reserved automatically for either three of these or three of a shadow. It's just that they're just good to have in general. Um, more specifically because they're dual terminal as well. Dual terminal has been discontinued, and I'm an avid fan of dual terminal. Um, I don't think there's been like a single video that I haven't featured some kind of dual terminal-related stuff. I'm a really big avid fan, 
and I believe Dual Terminal is well on its way into bleeding into the collector's market. And these are about like you know two bones if you factor in shipping. Unfortunately, there's really not a lot of fat stacks. The first stack here is going to be for a bone plus shipping for a four stack, and then there's four pages left of this. Let's go ahead and take a look at Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, which has a little bit more variation in prints, but again, nothing really worth anything. In my personal opinion, I would go for Dual Terminal 7. Looking great, looking fresh. And these are going to be about a little bit significantly more expensive. They're going to be about 3-ish bones plus shipping. Again, these are all one stack. Well, there's a three stack here. And here's a, an impressive 28 stack from Big City Cards for roughly around four bones and you factor in shipping. So plenty of availability on that card. These cards are just amazing. And I, I just really think it's important that everyone has at least a playset of each of those floodgates. Next is going to be Dark Necrofear. This is more specifically for collectors. It's not necessarily the most playable card. It is a level 8 Dark Fiend, which is really great. I'm an avid Dark World player. And the majority of my builds, I'll run advanced draw and trade in. And just, I love to all the turbo cards that you can play around with with Dark World. It's really fun. There's three prints more specifically that I wanted to focus on. Of course, the OG Ultra Rares Generation 1 from Lamp of the Nightmare First Edition. That's automatically a collector's card. It's been a collector's card for a really long time. Not even going to dip into that right now because it's just going to be like just pretty ungodly expensive. But that's there just to take a note. More specifically is going to be the Dual Terminal 2 Rares, which have seen a little bit of a price increase. There used to be so many of these on the market. I remember back in about 2018, probably in 2018, early 2018 was when I started investing very heavily in Dual Terminal stuff. And this was one of the first cards as well as Dual Terminal Rare. Gravekeeper Spy was another card that I invested very, very heavily in, got very, very cheap very early with a lot of fat stacks. And this is going to be roughly around two bones if you factor in shipping. There's a couple three stacks here. Here's a five stack, and there's only two pages left. So it's definitely not completely like chewed up on the market, but it's definitely had some decreases in its availability. And the artwork is just phenomenal. You can't really see it very well in this in this photo, but the artwork is just really dark and spooky. It's like this alien. It's got this shattered skull doll. And it's just, it, it's really, really great. I'm really into, like, alien artwork stuff and just, like, kind of dark, obscure artwork. And it definitely has all that going for its artwork. So I really appreciate this card for collector's value, more specifically for the rarities that it comes in with the DT2. And, of course, the secret rare, Dawning from Master Collection Volume 1. I really love both of the Master Collection Volume sets. They don some really great cards and really deep, awesome secret rare foiling. You can see the artwork here a little bit better. Just amazing, just great aesthetics and amazing artwork. And this is even cheaper. This is about, you know, roughly about, about a little over a bone if you factor in shipping. These are all one stacks, and there's only there was four pages left, so definitely a little more availability on this card. But all around a really great card. I definitely think it's worth taking a look at. Next, I'm going to re review some OCG Japanese cards. I lived in Japan for a little over 24 months back when I was uh, active duty in the Air Force. And I had some, well, one of my really good Japanese friends, she took me around to a lot of different shops and a lot of different big cities. And it was just a really good time. And there, I think there's still value um, in the OCG market, more specifically if you live in Japan, it's really difficult to live there unless like you're in the military or if your parents are in the military or if you have some kind of special student visa or whatever it may be, maybe for an English teacher, I'm not really sure. I got there because of the military. I don't really know how Americans or non-Japanese people get there, but that's how I got there. And the cards there are just so incredibly cheap. And it's like a dream come true to like go to like Akibahara and just Osaka and Kobe and just all these amazing things. Osaka and Kobe were probably some of my favorite card shops to go to. There was a lot of really just amazing card shops there. They even had a lot of English cards, some German cards, and it was it was just great. It was a really good time. Really affordable prices too. And uh, so we have the Lost Art Promotions now, and Konami finally released 
some cards that are actually noteworthy with uh, the Harpy stuff and the Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl. And, and I'm not even sure, like, are you guys buying those from your shops? I haven't been to my local card shop in a long time, and there's still no events being ran, so I don't even know if anyone is getting those Lost Art promotion cards. Maybe they are. I personally haven't. Um, I think that those are the first Lost Art promotion cards that have great potential for holding some really killer price points because of just the uncensorship. It actually is impactful and actually makes sense, and it's something that people actually want because they're actually major differences. But going back to this, some cards that we haven't gotten on the Lost Art promotions, uh, for starting out, is going to be Gemini Elf. And again, the way I'm just kind of doing the search engine is... Uh, lowest first and I just kind of just did the the, the card listing and, and you could, there's not really a lot of availability here I don't really know where else to get OCG cards um, besides I mean I guess there's some technically uh, on TCG player you can kind of go through the loops for selling that but no one really buys uh, Asian cards on TCG player so I use eBay for just a quick reference, there's uh, the first one's about 20, but it says apparently it's damaged. Usually, when the Japanese stuff they list on here, they're not really familiar. The the conditions don't really sync up. It's not really the same scale, so it's kind of a little bit better condition as opposed to like our like TCG damage. But you can see here, it's pretty obscure prices. There's like about 20 here, 60, 80, 80, 150. So it's kind of all over the place. But really quick, I'm going to go ahead and just click on this so you can kind of get a more close-up of the artwork. It's pretty obvious. You can see where the uncensored ship is in this artwork, and that's pretty much it. It's a simple detail, but it's significant enough to make it a lot more desirable, in my personal opinion, and makes it a lot better collector's card. Also, we never got this card in Ultimate Rare, the highest we ever got Gemini Elf here in... In the TCG was as a secret rare dawning on a labyrinth of nightmare, which again was a really great nostalgic generation one card. So next is going to be the dual terminal version of Dark Magician Girl. So this personally, Japan has a lot. I mean, I mean a lot of different versions of Dark Magician Girl and a lot of different rarities. This personally was one of my favorite rarities that I found in Japan. I invested in several of these personally myself. And there's really not too many listings. There's about six listings. This is a different one. Um, okay, no, this is the same one. These are the super rares, specifically from Dual Terminal Fort, Dual Terminal Twelve. And they're kind of all over the place. There's like apparently one here for like eight, uh, two for thirty, and then there's one here for like twenty six, and then you know twenty eight or twenty nine. So. Really quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and zoom up on this so you can see this. This might be like a little bit of a blurry picture. But again, it, it's it's obvious to tell the uncensorship here in, in this card. Really love the black magic, um, dark black magic star in the center. It's really great. And again, I just I really love dual terminal, especially hollow foil dual terminal like the super rare. It just looks really, really great. And the last card I wanted to feature here is going to be another OCG Japanese card. Interesting enough, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that this this only had one print in the OCG. This is Dark Witch. I think this came out of Metal Raiders, if I'm not mistaken, for us here in the TCG. But in Japan, the OCG, I'm pretty sure if I have my history right, this only got a single print as a common from this set. And the artwork is just fantastic. I'm going to zoom in, in a little bit here. just wanted to kind of showcase some prices. It's roughly around five, six bones, pretty much all across the board. And there's a, several different listings here, and it kind of just trickles up after that. But let's just go ahead and zoom in so you guys can get a little more details of the card. Again, uh, you got the horns here, the bust, the shorter skirt. And it, this card just looks really great. The facial expression is really kind of like... I don't really know how to explain it. It's just, it's kind of like obscure. And I don't know, I just really like it. I think it, it's, a, it's a really great card. I love how it's like just a vanilla common, a really basic standardized card, but it just holds a lot of true grit and potential on its own, especially for the uncensored artwork. So these are some of the, of, of a few of very many original OG 
our OCG Japanese cards that just look amazing in their original uncensored form that the Japanese artist originally intended for these cards. So I just wanted to showcase that for you guys really quick. I normally don't show Japanese cards, but I kind of wanted to try something a little bit different today. And this is this isn't something I'm going to do all the time. It's just kind of a, a new thing that I wanted to try out to try to mix it up and spice things up for you guys. I have social media. The link is going to be below. Facebook Messenger is the best way to get a hold of me. If you guys have any questions for me, I would love to hear from each and every one of you guys. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and are making some amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! investments yourself. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.